Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 640. This is going to be more of a rant, I should probably warn you now, um, because the topic today, the title is, and I didn't have a way of saying it neat, uh, elegantly, so I just called it Man Boys Will Be Boys. Not okay. Don't be a dick. And I'm going to talk about that more in a moment, but before I jump into that and <laughs> let loose, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. Yes, I'm going to out myself so you know who I am in case you get upset with my talk. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a best-selling author, um, relate, best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine as I help women find balance in love, life, and business. I actually help women create balance in life, life, love, life, and business. And as I said, I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what inspired these talks I started over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. This is why this is inspiring this talk as well. And so every day I've done these talks for over two years, as I mentioned, and today is episode number 640. And the topic today, actually, I started this, I, said, I talked about this back, whoa, probably about 18 months ago, when it was just called Don't Be a Dick. Um, and I also did part two, which is how not to be a dick. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a different angle today because it's on my mind and it's triggering me. So the topic again today for episode 640 is man boys will be boys, not okay, don't be a dick. That's a long-winded dick title to say the same thing I said before, which is don't be a dick. So let me talk about this so you know where I'm coming from. Um, and I'm going to out an environment, but not the people, because I'm going to respect some boundaries here. Well, they, they don't respect boundaries. And this is, this is what... This is what yeah, okay. <laughs> well, this is going to be messy. Hopefully not. We'll see. My intention with this rant and this vent is going to be at some teaching points as well. So it's not just going to be a vent that just throws things out in the world, but I want to just state what I noticed is the behavior that is not working clearly and some possible course corrective actions. I hope. We'll see what happens. So join me, show. <laughs> Why don't you watch me as I, rant, as I run off this... Um, Jump off this cliff and, cliff and hope for a parachute or a pair of wings. Because um, I don't have a script on this one at all. So today, it, by the way, it's Sunday. Welcome to my broadcast. It is 5 p.m. Pacific time. And I'm doing this on Facebook Live in case you're wondering. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll have to watch the Facebook Live to see the comments. They are interactive. Otherwise, watch it as you will. I have a love for my spiritual home agape which i've been going to now for over 21 was 25 years so it's not just a fly-by-night thing for me it's been there a long time it's been a commitment with me for a long time and today I, I saw what i've seen for many times but it was becoming more not so much exaggerated but noticeable and yes there are behaviors like this everywhere else but when i see it in my spiritual home it's kind of like someone shitting in my doorstep in, in an energetic sort of way yeah and it feels that way when I watch men who have tenure there in different ways, so they have a certain level of um, either authority or they act like they know the place inside out, which is debatable. <laughs> they have a way of being around women that is very disrespectful in my book. I, I was talking to a friend of mine, actually two friends of mine this morning, one of whom was telling me about her misadventure, not misadventure is the wrong word, her emotional challenge about being around certain men there who do not respect her. And in fact, it's not so much respect, it's the way that just, they don't see her as an equal, well, I'm asking this the solutions, I'll get to that in a moment, but they don't see her in a way that is anywhere close to being accurate. And it's this disdain and this callousness Whereas the, these guys are looking at women as objects, because that's what it feels like energetically, something to capture and, and control and to basically possess in a way. Now, this is old school macho behavior, so it's not like it's something new by any stretch of imagination, but it's happening in my spiritual home and it's bugging me, which is why I'm talking about it here. But what I'm noticing very clearly is these men aren't very mature. They may be old age-wise, they may be above 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, but their obvious maturity skills around women are sadly lacking. And so what I'm attempting to put out there is first of all, some behavioral traits and some solution-oriented ideas. That's the plan anyway. Let's see how this goes. So now I've laid the groundwork, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, I saw, I'm just I'm trying to see if I can count them, at least two three instances I remember this morning from guys I, guys that I 
two of which I know, one I don't know so well, but I'm aware of. The way that they were acting towards women, the way they were like, throw, it was almost, yeah, it was like fishing. They were like winding up the, the reel and casting their rod into the ocean, like to catch the fish. And in a couple of cases, it was so. I was almost almost begging the woman to go walk away, walk away. I mean, I was like wishing them to walk away because I could see that the. I'm gonna say it's not so much toxicity because it's not toxic either. Well, it is in a way because the results can be toxic, but it was so disrespectful, and it was not it was not from a place of service. It was a place of taking, and I'm using polite language because I could get a lot more blood than that. But this is for me is. Hey Gina, sorry, nice to see my broadcast. This is for me is one of these crux issues, and it's true everywhere in the culture. This is not just here, but I'm using my spiritual center as an example because it's the place where people are supposed to be aware and awake and conscious. But when it comes to inter intersexual relations, or should I say intergender relations, that's completely off the table. And it's disappointing to say the least, it's actually disgusting in some ways because I feel very frustrated with it. Now, I got to be careful because I know that I've had, thankfully, a blessed path being, being able to study with some major teachers over the last, well, especially, especially over the last 12 years, but over the last 30 years, who taught me about the level of respect we, have for, we can have for each other and how particularly men and women thrive when we respect each other. And I'm a big fan of that. That's why I teach this stuff so much. And it's a recognition of the equality, difference but equality, because we are different but equal. That is missing in a lot of places, and I even notice this at Agape, which is kind of interesting to watch. And what I'm also noticing, and this is one thing that's bugging me as well, <laughs> and I'm not using, I'm not going to talk about toxic masculinity, or toxic femininity, because it's neither one of those. It's toxic, it's toxic, actually, yeah, it's toxic egotism, because I've seen it in women as well as in men. There are women in there who basically play one-upmanship with each other, or one womanship with each other, and with the men. So there's not just men doing this, but both sides are doing it. And the challenge for me with, about the whole thing is like there's no real understanding going on. It's, it's lack of awareness. It's a lack of consciousness. It's a lack of heart sense of presence. And so this thing in this example is a telltale sign from everywhere. I mean... Uh, for every, I mean, just watch the news, you know, the political arena, the political scene, the political, um, <laughs> I was going to say, was, okay, I'm going to say it, I'm going to be blunt, the political shit show, <laughs> I was going to try something a bit more polite, but it wouldn't come out, so that's what you get, um, it's such a presentation of dysfunctional and disrespectful interaction. And it's so sickening, to be honest, that we are this evolved, yet we're this unevolved at the same time. We're so far ahead technology-wise, we're so far ahead in terms of, of waking up in so many parts of the world, but then behavior-wise, we're back in Neanderthal, Neanderthal times. And that just doesn't make sense. Well, it does make sense, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, if it doesn't work well, I'll put it that way. And I saw some friends of mine's post yesterday that really, for me, is underneath this which is that is in, and it may be this is the last death rattle. You know, the great paradox, exactly, Gina. The last death rattle is the sense that the patriarchal structure is dying. And I'm for one standing over it, lighting a match to burn the embers because I'm really looking forward to the rise of the matriarchy as a equal and, I won't say opposite, but equal and collaborative level. Because we have, and I'm using that generally, the we as the men, I have done our level best to screw up the culture, not as a in, not as a res intention, but as a side effect because of the competitiveness and the um, toxic egotism. I think it's a better label for me that has been running the show for so long. And this this challenge that men haven't understood, which seems so obvious to me, but it's just is that women are not objects. Like duh, but so many men still do that. I, I used to objectify women too, so I'm not saying I was I was perfect by any stretch of the imagination, imagination but I've woken up enough times, <laughs> I mean woken up enough times because I've fallen asleep a few times too, um, to recognize more and more just how much we as a, man, as, a, as a gender have room to grow in our respect and our appreciation of women for the power they bring. 
And I just saw a friend's video today. She's a woman who um, we've known for quite a long time. She used to be at Agape. She's now in um, Texas. Yes, get that right. And she's, she was talking about taboo stuff with women and, and doing, working with women to help them heal and grow. And everything she said, I was like, I know exactly what she's talking about. There's such a, a need for this now to bring women to the forefront in the sense that women need to support women, please. And yes, men need to support women as well. I'm all in on this, and you may know this if you've been watching my videos for the last two plus years, but I want to spread the message. I want to get this voice, get this out there to people to recognize the fact that there's a lot of room for improvement for how women are respecting themselves, each other, and, by, and from men. Because men have been running the show, and I'm using that in quotes intentionally, for way too long without the advice, counsel, collaboration, and insight of the feminine, of women. And if we don't change that in the next, well, was it 12 years, something like that, for the pure climate change becomes irrevocable, we're going to screw this up. So I'm big passion about this. So, Gina, what do what you say there? As women, you think, as women, you think it's your job to raise your own standards and expectations, as you're always teaching us through examples. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It is absolutely, it's, it, ladies, it's your job to raise your own standards, but it's also our job as men to honor that, respect that, and support that. It's something that I've been clear about, as I mentioned, I mentioned earlier, about how I know Agape, both men and women are doing this. And what I'm noticing is the energetic dysfunction that's there. It's really challenging because this is my spiritual home. And when I see people acting this way towards the same gender and then to each other, I mean, I was, I was, <laughs> I actually talked to somebody this morning about it and said, look, when you, if you have a meeting of the men this month, I want to be there because I want to talk to them about waking the F up and stop messing around with the women to stop treating them like objects, to respect them, and to become conscious spiritual men who honor, respect, and care about women. Because the truth is, I've seen women leave Agape because they got too much harassment from the men. And that doesn't work in my book. Spirit, agape is my spiritual home. As I mentioned, it's like someone shitting on the, on the mat of the house. It's like, if you come to Agape, you should be welcomed, appreciated, honored, and respected. Doesn't matter what your gender, what your preference is, any of that stuff. And so when some guys want to play their games with the women coming in there, the women don't want to come back to Agape again, that isn't right. And now the thing is, thankfully a couple of times I actually found out from, because I met these women other places who said, oh, I saw you at Agape, but I don't have to go there anymore because this guy was there. I said, what do you mean this guy? And so I counsel them to remember that he's not representing Agape. He's just a guy that goes there. It's this guy coming back again. But how many women don't come back because the men don't treat them with respect? I don't know. And that's what also concerns me to a degree. There's no, there's no data for that. So we say, Gina, many, many of us have not, have, haven't been taught. We don't even know the boundaries we should hold for ourselves. And that's part of this conversation too. Um, although I suspect for a lot of women, there's a lot of innate knowledge that hasn't been tapped into because a lot of women haven't been given the space or the respect or the encouragement to trust their own boundaries. So I suspect for a lot of women, they may actually have the intuitive for that level. And Thank you. See, my, my work and examples that I teach are very important and helpful. Thank you, Gina. I appreciate that. This is my, my mission. It's funny. I had this feeling, just sidebar slightly for a second. Um, I mentioned in the last couple of videos, I've been getting over a cold that started on Tuesday. And I felt like I'd been hit, kicked by, hit by a bus on Friday because it was like it, the cold was ending, but I was as weak as a kitten. It felt so wiped out. And I'm slowly getting back to normal, although... Today I had major issues with um, what seemed like basically it seemed like low, low, low mineral count. I was getting such a lot, lot of weird um, aches and stuff. And at some point over the weekend, I was almost feeling like I didn't need to do it anymore. Like I was, I was done. I was going to give up. I don't know where that thought came from, but that's one thing I need to do this today is to get myself back on track. Because this is a selfish move in some ways to vent this to get the energy moving again. Because I have been. Um, for a moment there, I felt like I was being having a passenger on the bus, not driving the bus. So thank you for the reminder, Gina. And yes, this is my passion, my work. And it looks like I may have to start talking to men as well as women. But I need to do this from a way that is one, receptive to receptive landing, talk to men who really want to listen, and to really bring the level of respect for the women's sake, that's the wrong word, for the women's future. And I've got to be careful because it's tempting for me to, to become very, um, 
I can be dangerous when it comes to talking to the men. Dangerous to myself too, because I might say things I shouldn't and then get beaten up. You know, that level of fear, that sort of um, <laughs> childhood fear comes up because I happened when I was a kid. So there's definitely a distinct sensitivity about this for me, but also there's a need out there more and more, I think, for women and men to start to really understand who we are in the world. Yeah, this is coming. I talked a few weeks ago about an, a brand I've held on to for the last seven years that I haven't used yet. And I had a feeling around New Year, it was about, it was in launch this year, and I get more and more clears coming forward this year. Um, because it's the real work that's coming underneath everything in terms of my work with the relationship, focused coaching for women, and now my coaching more and more towards helping women own their feminine in the world. It's part of a bigger picture. And this is a part to remind myself that there's a room for us to improve. Oh, I need to give some proactive tips as well before I finish up. So for the men watching this, trusting men will watch this, and ladies, please share it with them as well. Um, I said before, simply put, you know, please don't treat women as objects. So what do you mean? What you have to do instead is treat women as equals. Treat women as honorable whole beings that have boundaries. Thank you, Eugenia, for that reminder. And also that their viewpoints could be even more important than ours. I've talked before about how the power of intuition is a feminine skill that most men don't have very tuned into. Women have more naturally because men and women are more generally feminine. Men are more generally masculine in my languaging. Intuition is a skill that we can desperately use more and more in this world, particularly in the government. <laughs> so I was feeling that, that as we move this culture forward and we shift the conversation where men recognize women as equals, they may be the weaker sex physically because that's the way the genetics work. It doesn't mean the women are weak in any other way because I know for a fact most men would never be able to give childbirth and survive. Just saying that. So the, the, the tolerances women have for pain, which is one of the problems, I believe, is so much greater than men because women put up with so much shit that they don't need to. So part of my work is really supporting women, honoring women and holding space for women to respect themselves and live in a thriving way in the world. And I do it from my own masculine heart because I'm so clear that men need to stand in that place too. And for the women, when I hold that space for them, better even, that's the first time I've ever experienced a man who brings that energy to them. So I guess I need to start teaching the men how to do that as well. And I certainly know where to refer them to. Yeah, go, yeah, yeah, Huntley. Yeah, it's becoming a single social setting kind of place. You know, that's the problem with the place. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a speed dating club. It's a spiritual center. And that's the thing that was triggering me today is because, you know, there, there used to be a singles ministry, but it was the only people that went to singles ministry when they had singles meetings. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, the singles ministry was all the lonely hearts. Mostly it was people who weren't um, very gregarious, very happy. They were most, most of them seemed to be very introverts. So there hasn't been a really honest, real social interaction place for singles at Agape. And Sunday service is not where it's meant to be. I mean, it used to be okay at the old place. That's, the, that's probably what it is too, just a sidebar, just recognizing the place. We moved to the new location at the Saban Theater in July. And for the previous 18 years, we were at the other building where you had a big parking lot outside. So a lot of the interaction I see now used to happen outside the building where I didn't see it. But now, because we only have the lobby of the, of the, of the Saban Theater to hang out with, um, oh, don't, mean to get, don't get me started, Huntley. <laughs> Yeah, sadly, the staff and the volunteers are a big part of the issue. Yeah, I agree with you. I've been trying to push some things forward and it's not working. I may have to sit down with somebody. The problem is, actually, hold that thought. I'll come back to that. Um, but let me just finish the other thought. So being at the Saban Theater with the lobby area, because the outside the front doors is just a street, I see a lot more of the behaviors and patterns happening right in front of me because it's a much more contained area, which is maybe why it's triggering me more because I'm seeing it more blatantly in front of me. That's the way it is. One thing I said to a friend of mine this morning, and I, I gotta be careful, I'm not gonna say this out loud here because this is public, is um, there's a lot of people in leadership at Agape who don't hold the solution space, they're part of the problem space. So what they propagate down into their subordinates is the same pattern. You know, it doesn't matter which organization it is, if it's corporate structure, or if it's a, a political structure, or if it's spiritual structure, the environment it's in. If the leadership at the top doesn't exemplify, teach, and honor the level of respect for both genders there, it doesn't always trickle down. And I feel that's one of the things you're gonna to have to change wherever you are, in whatever group setting you're in, is to make sure the leadership of that organization, that structure, that collective, that group, 
holds a level of respect for both sides of the conversation, for both genders, and, and basically models that first and then teaches it. And that's where I think I need to bring the, you know, this could take, this could go corporate too. I can take this message into a corporate structure too, because unfortunately so many women have had to put up with a lot of shit to be in business. And for a lot of women, I talked about this before months ago, have had to adopt the masculine way, the, what, the male way of being to survive in the business world because it's such a business, sorry, such a, ma a male dominated structure. And being feminine in the business world is not something that's been accepted. I would say it's definitely time, absolutely time, because we're so far behind the times. Having, f and having, it's funny, it's like, so excited with a new woman leadership in, in a corporate, you know, in Silicon Valley or something. It would be great when it's no longer big news, like it's normal. And it's true in so many areas where the number of judges that were brought in, in it was in uh, Houston, where there were 17 female African-American judges placed in place during the art of the election. That's awesome, but again, it's this double step thing. It's like, it's so cool to hear that at the same time, it'd be nice when that's normal. Where it's like, oh, doesn't make, it's like if it's men or women, it doesn't make a difference anymore because we've finally found balance. But we've got to move from one side of the pendulum swing to the other side. And then when we do that, we can come back to center in a place that works. And so right now, we're on one end, we're still on one end, one end which is side of the screen, we're supposed to be on. One end of the pendulum swing, we're still stuck in the patriarchy. And it's that structure that is still, um, What's the, what's the, I remember a poetic way of saying this, but it's this this um, last clattering death gasp. <laughs> it sounds bad, but it's kind of like the thing that the patriarchal society is coming undone, and it's taking some time to do that. But I'm definitely on the um, the edge, looking forward to the future where the feminine becomes in comes to the rise, and we have a much more matriarchal matriarchal or mixed societal structure that works for everybody. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Um, I do invite your thoughts and questions about this. This is a topic I know it's gonna open up some, some, some hurts for some people and also possibly some insights as well. Um, there's a lot, this is just the tip of the iceberg and it's just starting things off, but I will start in now and maybe, maybe it'll open up some more conversation for me too. So please add your thoughts, questions, comments below and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Not usually this sort of event, but it's that's what came up today. Um, you can find my Facebook Lives personally if you want to join me live on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. If you want to watch my um, replays, I keep them on my business page. My personal page has other stuff on it too, so it gets harder to find them, but my business page is all replays pretty much. So if you go to my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author, you can find all my replays there. And then on YouTube, so if you're watching us on YouTube, you'll know why, where this came from first. On my YouTube channel, which is, um, Barry Selby is my, play, is my channel, and Messages for the Masculine is my playlist. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you can watch all of those in YouTube format. I invite questions, comments either place. Um, I am gonna open up some space for coaching men who wanna really grow and learn, not just the women. So if you're interested in that, um, I'll put a contact link in the, in the comments, you can reach out to me. And uh, consider what I said. What are your thoughts on this? I do welcome your input, your ideas, your thoughts. And if you want to share this with some people you know, um, do it carefully. <laughs> if, if you're sharing it with friends and collaborators, you go, this is the same topic, great. If you're doing it to upset somebody, that might be dangerous. But I appreciate you, your thought at least. So again, I'll be here to support you if you want to reach out, find me over social media. Um, I'll, put a contact, I'll put the contact link in the comments. You can reach out if you have any questions directly, you want to get some support and uh, do welcome your comments. This one could be provocative. So thanks again for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourselves.